Do you think we should Thank consider you. bringing back capital punishment? I think in some cases, Mark, it should be an option for the courts. I mean, it's not for me or you to decide, and mm. thankfully. Um, yeah. It must be, you know, if, if it's going to be brought back, obviously it's a matter for the courts. So in particular cases, you know, obviously it's for the courts to decide. However, there are some cases where perhaps one can think that it would be appropriate. For example, the uh, two terrorist murderers of Fusilier Re Lee Rigby, um, uh, perhaps even uh, the, the murder of Sir David Amos. Um, uh, one of the things that worries me slightly about your introduction is that you gave examples and heinous, appalling crimes that they are, um, where the women were victims. It also happens the other way around. And I, I've, I've got a concern that there is some sort of creeping towards saying that, you know, the, the, these sort of horrendous crimes are male on female, male sort of uh, perpetrator yeah. on female victim. It's not quite the case. And in fact, um, uh, you know, just to put it into perspective, um, in 2002, 388 victims of, um, of uh, domestic murder were committed, were men uh, who were murdered by their wives. Likewise, though, the proportion, let's get that right, 1,200 women were murdered by their partners, their male partners. So there is, it's just to cover that point. The, I but no, I think it should one. be a, yeah. yeah, it should be an option for the court. Um, and I think cases such as the murder of Lee Rigby, uh, where it is on video, good quality vi video, the, the perpetrators uh, have admitted it. They, they're, they're there on video with blood on their hands, actually committing the crime. Um, and there's no ambiguity. Now, then it's, there is a debate, of course, as to whether or not it's appropriate. But I don't think it's entirely for us to decide whether they should be executed or not. It's for the court. But I think it should be there and available uh, to the court in certain cases, such as terrorism or murder, where, for example, uh, a kidnapped victim is murdered, some sort of real aggravation. I mean, not that you can aggravate murder much more than it is already, but in cases such as that, I think there's a valid case, yes. Shabnam Chowdhury, former Scotland Yard detective superintendent. Uh, welcome back to the show, Shabnam. Why should my viewers pay to accommodate and feed these monsters? Well, um, look, any murder, whether it's upon a male or a female, is horrendous. And, um, you know, it's, it's regardless whether it's male or female, there are horrific crimes. Um, you know, miscarriages of justice. Uh, you only need to look at what happened with the Birmingham Six when the, they were uh, exonerated, walked free in 1991. Um, there was a case in America, there are plenty of cases in America, but the young girl, uh, Sabrina, Sabrina Smith, who was only 17 back in 1989, where she was convicted of the murder of her child, who was only nine months of age, and uh, she was sentenced to death row, spent six years in prison, three of those on death row, um, and then she was exonerated because it was found that the child actually desired, died of kidney disease. So also, you know, perjury, wrongful accusations lead to wrongful cases, many cases where the credibility of the witness is unreliable or they've lied uh, and it's subsequently found to be the case. Um, cases where there's, D there's been no DNA or forensics. I know that was many years ago, but things change rapidly uh, with technology, with forensics and with DNA. And to me, um, two rights don't make a wrong. I do think some of the crimes that have just been talked about, um, most of them are absolutely heinous. But the fact is, you can still get miscarriages of justice. But isn't that the point with the amazing technology that the authorities have at their disposal, CCTV, DNA evidence you name it, computer records as well, mobile phone records, Shabnam, that uh, actually miscarriages of justice are far less likely and someone like Fred West was never going to be wrongly convicted. Yeah, but uh, you say that now, you know, in 1989, back in the 70s, in the uh, 60s, we didn't have the kind of technology and the forensic capabilities that we have now. Who's to say what we will have in 10, 15, 20 years' time when somebody has been convicted or in even 30, 40, 50 years' time? The fact remains that, yes, we do have far better technology now. We have far better forensic capability now. We have far better investigative processes now, which bring offenders to justice. But my personal view is that um, 
you know, you can get miscarriages of justice. But for me, uh, to bring in the death penalty uh, is is not something that I would but personally. I mean, um, are, are you suggesting that Harold Shipman, Fred West, or Peter Sutcliffe? had even a 1% chance of being proved not guilty. I mean, it was an open and shut case. They did it. Yeah, they did do it, but, but there were different cases, weren't they? And I they? don't you think they deserve to live, Mark. Shabnam. And I'm not sure their family members would want them to either. Uh, so, can you hear me? Um, yeah, let me, uh, let me... Uh, if you, if you um, answer that point, Shabnam, and I'll come to Henry. Well, the point is, yes, that they were convicted, but the fact remains that, for me, this is my personal view, that they did commit heinous crimes, but I just don't think that our justice system, you know, is one that we should then say, well, you killed this many people, you murdered this many people in such heinous ways, and therefore we'll take your life. We live in a democratic society. We live in a, a, a society where, you know, people are... Um, respectable, um, however, whichever way you want to look at it. But the fact is, I don't think that even, you know, for people like Fred West or uh, Peter Sutcliffe, that, you know, in this society, in the day and age that we live in, that those are options. I mean, Henry Bolton, the point is that uh, there is a victim here, there are families, and they would feel very strongly about this. Uh, many would support capital punishment. Yeah, I, I don't think it's for the families either to uh, decide. Uh, it's a matter for the court. The court needs worth, to weigh up. Is it not worth uh, considering families? Well, I was just about to say it is a matter for the court to actually take into consideration, as courts do, that's their job, all of the factors around a particular case. So it is all about, really, whether or not the individual, um, uh, you know, the state, the mental state of the individual, the background to the murder, the, ex the, the various circumstances that have led to it. Um, so one can think of a, a case where there's maybe been decades of, of emotional and physical abuse of the victim, uh, of, the, of the perpetrator, and, the, and, and, and they snap. Now, going back to Shabnam's point, you know, uh, to, be, to be honest, Shabnam, you're, you're sort of rather talking as though um, we're, we're discussing here the idea of a, a blanket application of capital punishment in the case of all murders. I'm not suggesting that for a moment. I'm saying that in particular, particular cases, such as terrorism, um, such as particularly aggravated murder, such as the murder of a kidnapped victim, um, then it should be an option for the court. And so it's not, we're not talking about the statutory application of the death penalty in every case of murder, not at all. Uh, there are, as the Americans would call it, degrees of murder. So, um, and I think, you know, in, in the court's decision, they do take every, all of these, these aspects into consideration. Yes, I mean, Shabnam, I wonder whether there's any likelihood of capital punishment being reinstated. What's your view? Um, well, I'd be surprised if it was, if I'm uh, completely honest. But the point that, um, that was made with regards to, um, although uh, you're suggest suggesting is that to let the courts decide, but take into account the impact on the victim and their families. Um, what we have to also remember is when you, you go through a court trial or court process, and if it's taken a year to get to trial or six months, the emotions and the um, how families feel at that particular time may well be very, very different to how they would feel a year, two years down the line. Many people go back to forgiving people in certain in certain crimes or that they don't want to, um, you know, that they how they felt at the time is different to how they would feel. So I don't know that, you know, I don't personally you know, feel that, you know, I, I accept that what you're saying is taking the family's considerations or the victims perpetrate, you know, relatives and so on. But I think that people's emotions tend to change as well. And I think as a what, society... What you're doing, think... Shabnam, if I may, is you're rather undertaking the role of the court. Um, is, should it be an option for the court, which then can con conduct what research it needs, order whatever additional inquiries into uh, an individual's mental health status and so on and so forth? I mean, you're, what the, the points you raise are absolutely valid points. But it's for a court to work through that, not necessarily for us to say whether or not the court should have the option available to them. I mean, you know, that's a different question. Um, this is why judges are paid so much. It's because they, are, they have this job to do. And uh, that's why we have a jury system. 
um, which incidentally many other countries do not have. And in that case, I would be highly sort of concerned about the, the, the question. But, uh, you know, this is the role of the courts. The question, I think, in front of us is, should it or should it not be, in particular types of case, uh, an option for the court? And I believe that it should be an option available for the court in its sentencing. Well, I do agree with you, Henry, that it's for the courts to decide. Final thought on this, Shabnam. Mm. You understand the psychology of criminals. Uh, most of these people are dreadful cowards, aren't they? And I wonder whether many of them can live with the idea of a life in prison but wouldn't want to face death. And therefore, it's the ultimate disincentive. Well, I think that uh, when criminals are convicted, and don't forget people that, uh, you know, who, who murder aren't necessarily always people that are involved in crime uh, continuously throughout their lives, but many that are involved in crime one way or another or have certain ways of behaviour, they become automatically institutionalised themselves and ready for a, a life uh, in prison where yeah. they will have their liberty taken away from uh, them. Uh, let's think of her name, Mark. Henry? If, if, if I may, just bro very briefly, the example I gave of somebody who, for example, abducts a victim um, and then murders them. Um, so I I in such a case as that, then the, death, the, 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 the initial motive might be financial, perhaps, um, but the, the murder would be maybe deterred if there was capital punishment available to the court. Do you see what I mean? So it's not a, 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 an in, initially, at the outset of the, the, the crime and the, the conduct of the crime, the objective might be financial, hence the, the kidnap for blackmail or for, for ransom. And then there is a problem in the whole process for the criminal. The criminal encounters some sort of problem and decides, has got to make a decision as to what to do. Mm. Do they try and make a run for it and, l and leave the victim, the kidnapped victim, alone? Or do they kill the victim as a witness? Now, in cases like that, where, again, the murder is, is premeditated but is motivated by something else, triggered by something else, perhaps, I'm not saying this is the case, but I'm just countering there are other aspects to what Chabnam's just said, perhaps it would act as a deterrent in such a case as that. Certainly, if most people were involved in a botched murder, Shabnam, and they made that calculation in my mind that if I actually kill somebody, I'll die or I'll go to jail, then that's a bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? Now, I don't think criminals necessarily think like that when you're talking about the situation that you're talking about, kidnapping, whether it's for financial... Well, Shabnam, gain, Shabnam, I... they're very calculating. You should be the first to agree I... with that. I... I'm a former police officer as well, um, so I've got experience with this, this too. Sorry, sorry. Let me, when, I say, when I say that um, they don't necessarily think like that, what I'm saying is that when criminals are involved in crime, their one and uh, ultimate goal generally is to get that crime committed, whether it's for financial gain or whether, and you talk about that, you look about, look about um, consider sexual predators. You know, they won't be sitting there thinking, if I don't go out and commit this sexual act and then commit a murder, that I may be subjected to uh, being uh, on death row and um, to, be, to, mur to be killed myself. That's not how they necessarily think. I'm not a psychologist in any way in respect of that. But I'm talking about my experiences of working with criminals over the years who generally... They don't think anything about anyone other than the fact that they want to commit that crime, they want that financial gain, generally that's what it is, and they'll still go ahead because they're willing to take those risks. Well, we'll have to beg to differ, but that's the point of the clash. My thanks to both of you. Henry Bolton, Brit Pack, UK chairman and former UKIP leader, former police officer as well, and my sincere thanks to Shabnam Chowdhury, former Scotland Yard detective superintendent. I appreciate both of you for sharing your time. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.